What's going on in Mexico City Airport? I've been tagged in so many social media posts lately about incidents that's been happening there. So is there something special happening or is this just part of the general ramp up chaos that we've been seeing lately after the pandemic? Well, it turns out that when we started digging in this, it's actually a very fascinating story, which includes political decisions, changes in airport structure and some quite bad timing. So stay tuned. You might have seen video of a very serious incident that happened in Mexico City Airport earlier in May this year. It appears that the ATC controllers cleared an aircraft to land on the same runway as another aircraft was already lined up and ready for departure. This happened during a really busy period, during nighttime and also after a shift change had happened in the ATC tower. And the only reason this didn't turn into a serious accident was because of the quick reaction of the pilots, both in the landing aircraft, in the aircraft on the ground and some of the aircraft that was watching this unfolding. This was just one incident, but it seemed like this was part of a pattern where many serious incidents and potential accidents had been reported during the previous months and weeks. A bulletin issued by IFALPA, the International Pilot Association, listed several incidents ranging from aircraft landing with low fuel warnings to EGPWS activations and just generally a lot of really long delays at the airport. Everything pointing to an air traffic environment that was reaching the very limits of its capacity. And about a year before that incident that we just talked about, in May 2021, the United States actually downgraded Mexico's aviation safety rating. And that had some serious implications for Mexican carriers that wanted to operate into the United States because it limited them from adding extra flights, for example, and also from entering into code sharing agreements with American carriers. And this incident that happened in May this year actually led to the resignation of the Director of Navigational Services in Mexican airspace. And on top of that, the ATC unions have filed over 30 different reports over safety-related incidents that happened very recently in Mexico City Airport. So what is actually happening? What's going on? Well, in order to understand that, we're going to have to look into the layout of this airport a little bit closer. Mexico City's existing international airport is called Benito Juarez International and it has the IATA code MEX and the uh, ICAO code MMMX. It has two parallel runways, runway 05 left and right and 23 left and right. But the problem with these runways is that they're situated very close to each other, which limits the amount of parallel operation that they can do. These runways are very long, they're both over four kilometers, but they need to be that long because the airport is situated very high up at 7,300 feet above mean sea level. And at that altitude, the air is a little bit thinner, which means that the aircraft performance is a bit worse. The engines are not producing as much thrust as they would do at the um, sea level. So they need longer runways, both to depart, but also to land because they need to come in with slightly higher true airspeed. The airport has had a long, proud history, which spans over 100 years, with the first commercial flight taking place in the 1920s and the first international commercial flight taking place in the 1940s. Over the years, there's been a lot of changes to the layout of the airport, but during the last few years, most of those changes has happened to the terminal buildings and not so much has happened to expand the overall capacity of the airport. Now the reason for that is because the city in itself has expanded and now it's kind of surrounding the airport on all different sides, making any expansion of the existing airport virtually impossible. But what we have to remember here is that Mexico City is a sprawling international travel hub. In 2019, the airport serviced more than 50 million passengers, making it the 33rd most traveled airport in the world that year. And during the pandemic, even though the amount of travel kind of reduced dramatically, it actually rose to the 16th most busy airport in the world, with more than 36 million passengers, even though it was in the middle of the pandemic. So this all translates into a very obvious problem, where you have a very busy and popular airport, which is just getting more and more passengers coming in, but where the authorities are unable to expand its capacity. 
Now the authorities have tried to deal with this by limiting the type of operation that is allowed into MEX airport to only commercial operation. So private jets and general aviation is not allowed to fly into the airport unless they have very specific authorization to do so. But that has obviously not been enough. The amount of passengers and flights coming into Benito Juarez airport is now at absolute maximum capacity. And while that is one of the reasons to the increase in uh, serious incidents at the airport, it's not the only one. You see, normally when a big airport like this reaches its capacity limit, the authorities will start to look at a long-term solution. And that might be to add an extra runway or two to increase capacity, but if that's not possible, which it's not in the case of Benito Juarez airport, they're going to have to look at another solution. And that might be to build an entirely new airport. Now, that airport should ideally be pretty close to the city. You don't want to put it too far away. And this is exactly what the authorities in Mexico have been planning for the last two decades. The Mexican authorities had actually found an ideal site for this new airport, which was to the northeast of the existing airport, in a uh, place called Zona Federal del Lago del Texcoco, which is an old, dry lake bed. Now, the project, who got its official go-ahead in 2014, was going to be called the uh, Mexico City Texcoco Airport Project. And the site where it was supposed to be built was absolutely enormous. The plan was to build three parallel runways on this site with enough room between them to be able to do parallel operation on all three runways at the same time. The airport was supposed to be super modern, a real engineering marvel. The problem though was that the project was also going to become the most expensive infrastructure project in Mexico for the last 100 years. But the plan went ahead anyway and work started on the site in 2015 and the idea was that the airport was going to be up and running in 2020 and at that point it was going to completely replace the old airport. So the old airport would be discontinued and the new airport would take over all of its traffic. And this is likely the reason why there hasn't been much modernization going on in Benito Juarez airport because it was just going to be abandoned anyway when the new airport was finally built and ready to take over the traffic. So this meant that the old airport, who was still the only airport in the Mexico City area, was now taking on an enormous influx of passengers and flights, but none of its systems was really being upgraded. Then, in 2018, there was a change of political direction in Mexico and the politicians decided to completely abandon the Texcoco airport project. It was just becoming too expensive. But this meant that all of the work and the money that had already been poured into the Texcoco airport was now completely abandoned. And since the airport was built on an old dry lake bed, it was partially flooded with time. But now the original problem still remained. Mexico City still didn't have a big enough airport. The Texcoco airport was supposed to be built to expand to be able to take 120 million passengers, which is more than a 100% increase from the 2019 level. So what was now going to be the alternative? Well, I'll tell you all about that after this short message from my sponsor. Are you tired of binge watching meaningless content and paying a lot of money for it? Well then, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, which is CuriosityStream, from the founder of the Discovery Channel. CuriosityStream has some truly groundbreaking documentaries and thousands of non-fictional titles from some of the best filmmakers in the world. The content spans from music, technology, history, and my personal favorite, which is science. I recently discovered a new absolute favorite series on the platform called Curious Minds, and you should really check that out. CuriosityStream is available worldwide and it's one of the most affordable platforms out there to begin with. You can get access to it for as little as $20 per year. But since you are a subscriber of this channel, you can click on the link here in the description below, which is curiositystream.com slash mentornow and use the promo code mentornow so that they know that you're coming from this channel. That will give you a whopping 25% further reduction on the price, bringing it down to only $14.99 per year. That's less than $1.25 per month, which is incredible. Now back to the video. Well, the new plan became to have two airports in the Mexico City area using the old Benito Juarez airport in its existing capacity, and then building a brand new airport in the site of the Santa Lucia Air Force Base, which was going to be called Felipe Angeles International Airport. 
Said and done, in 2019 work started on the Felipe Angeles International Airport and what they needed to do was to convert this military airport which only had one runway into a modern huge international airport with three parallel runways. And the plan was to have about two kilometers between the furthest separated runways making it possible to do simultaneous parallel operation into all three runways. And on the 21st of March this year, 2022, operations officially started into this new airport, increasing the potential capacity of Mexico City by a lot. But something that you have to remember here is that whenever you have two major airports now sharing the same airspace, it means that the complexities inside of that airspace is going to go up a lot as well. And the ones that are going to have to deal with that are the existing air traffic controllers. And now we're likely getting close to the real reason why there's been an uptick in serious incidents and reports into Benito Juarez International Airport. Because if you put together the fact that the airport facilities have not really been upgraded because everyone thought that the airport was going to be abandoned and replaced by the new airport that was being built, and then that was completely scratched and instead they built another airport which now coexists within the same airspace structure as the old one, meaning that the controllers that are operating in the old airspace have to learn new arrival and departure procedures. And then you put on top of that the pandemic, which initially, of course, decreased the amount of passengers and flights coming into the airspace. But it also came with all of the same complexities as to be seen in the rest of the world, with a lot of people, air traffic controllers, maybe being furloughed, the workload changing enormously. And then you have this uptick, this sudden uptick in travel demand that we're seeing right now, which is causing havoc all over the world. I did a video on that, which you can check out up here. Now these same controllers have to get used to this much, much higher workload, but with a much more complex airspace structure and potentially with old systems that might need an upgrade. After the incident in May that we discussed in the beginning of the video, officials in Mexico actually went out and said that they urgently needed 250 more air traffic controllers, just indicating the scale of the capacity problems that they are facing right now. So what do I think about this then? Well, I see this from two different ways. So first of all, there's no question that the combination of all of these factors that we've already discussed and the increase in travel demand is putting a lot of pressure on the air traffic control infrastructure around Mexico City, right? And that is likely what has caused the uptick in these incidents, which is serious. But on the other hand, I'm really happy to see how all of the stakeholders here, the air traffic control unions, the pilots, the uh, airport authorities, they're all reporting this and they seem to be aware of it and they're obviously trying to find solutions to it. They're now trying to get as much traffic as possible away from Benito Juarez International Airport over towards Felipe Angeles Airport, the new one, to try to match out the capacity a little bit and hopefully reduce the overall strain. And with time, as they employ more air traffic controllers and the existing air traffic controllers get more experience of the airspace structure, I think that we're gonna see a big reduction in these incidents. But up until then, it's still going to be up to the stakeholders, the pilots, the air traffic controllers, and anyone who operates within this environment to make sure that the operation stays as safe as humanly possible. And the first step to achieving that is awareness. And this is something that they're obviously working on. Now, check out this video next, which I think that you're really going to enjoy. Or if you want to see how the Russian invasion of Ukraine is affecting the aviation business, check out this playlist. If you want to support me and my team and the work that we do, consider becoming part of my lovely Patreon crew. Or buy yourself some merch. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.